outside to the shell. So if you're pre-folding, you wouldn't see the popping radiation. You wouldn't, sorry? So, so yeah, so from that viewpoint, so what's happening? So you can think of uh, one of these as the involved observer following the collapsing shell. So even if they are moving at a speed of light also, they would never be able to cross the horizon. But uh, normally, if you are pre boring observer, you wouldn't see the poking radiation from the black hole. But the well, that, that, that's before the firewall story appears, right? But now people know that you would actually, because of the entanglement of the early and the later radiation, the poking radiation, you have to be able to see something. So you are seeing that the energy of the shell is radiated from to the infinite. Yes, it is. Okay, please. So you're saying if H bar, if I include quantum effects, maybe there is no horizon. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. So, but, uh, uh, how about uh, uh, scaling H bar from one to zero? Then what? Can, can you smoothly uh, attach your final result to GR result? Yeah. Here, this is the GR result. I have no quantum correction here for the trajectory of the mass shell. But in GR case, there is a singularity and event horizon. Singularity in yes, event yes, horizon. Event horizon for pure GR pure I general. thought only you had singularity at the origin, but no singularity at the horizon. Right? Yeah. I mean, so just a metric singularity, not a real geometric singularity. Maybe I think you might be saying that the scale of U curve would have been a constant uh, if H bar was zero. Say that again? Uh, the, uh, a of u would have been just some a naught if h bar was zero because uh, there wouldn't oh, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right. So in which case, when a of u is a constant, then of course the ingoing trajectory yes. can cross it. Uh, yeah. So he's, I think, maybe trying to ask in the limit as h bar goes to zero, how do you see that it can cross? Uh, uh, but it's somehow for non zero h bar, uh, it is not crossing. Oh, yes. Okay, I see. So, um, yeah, that was what I tried to demonstrate um, when I showed this equation. So, there is a transformation um, that's valid, only valid when you have constant A. You see that when you approach to the horizon, this term diverges. So that um, you, you would have to consider you approaching to infinity. So then the crucial difference is whether the space is Minkowski or still um, Schwarzschild when you go to infinity, right? There's a dramatic difference over here. So for an infalling observer to fall in within finite time, you, re you rely on the uh, validity of this expression. But if A0 is not a constant, this expression cannot make sense anymore, right? Because the value of A0 would change from finite value to zero. And uh, yes. Uh, so in the argument that you gave in the next couple of slides, uh, I didn't quite follow the, uh, so you had a sort of a general argument. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so here I, I didn't understand this, uh, the first equality. Uh, this uh, one? Uh, no, no, and the this equation, one? yeah, the first one. Uh, 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 so here I'm using the outgoing Vidya metric and plugging R equal to A as function of U. And then the first term of the outgoing Vidya metric vanishes. Should we go back? Right, when I have R equal to 
a r equal to a the first term vanishes so I get minus 2 du dA, but dA is a dot du, right? Uh, but uh, I mean, I thought you were just assuming that at some instant u not r of u is equal to a of u. At some instant u not, which is where they would cross. At so some point it's I have capital R equal to a, but I can always consider little r equal to a as the trajectory of a point on the Schwarzschild radius. Um, no, I, I, I thought that your argument is using the fact that you're using R, I mean, you're replacing that dr by dA precisely because your ingoing trajectory uh, is uh, R of U. Uh, and this capital R? Yes. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I meant. So I'm, tra I'm tracing two trajectories. Yeah. One of the trajectory is capital little r equal to capital R. The other trajectory is little r equal to little a. And uh, if they cross, if for the horizon to appear, they have to cross, which means that from certain point u and later, little a would be uh, larger than capital R, so that I can apply the outgoing by the metric, and then this equation would make sense. Um. No, I'm not sure I understand that because I think if you're assuming that it, it is crossing at only one instant, then I'm not sure you could uh, you could argue that this R of U uh, is moving faster than light uh, because it, because there would be uh, th this. So I have a trajectory of R. This is U, and I assume that they cross, right? So this is A. After this point, A is larger than R, so I can use the outgoing Bidea metric. And I can check whether this curve is space-like or light-like by plugging in R equal to little a. And I see that it's always space-like, namely this part is always space-like, including this point. But that's impossible. Any other questions? Okay, then let us thank Professor Ping Ho again. <laughs> so we have lunch break, and let us get together here again at 14.